drumming in a band. And um, when when I found out that Kevin was uh, in a band and Phil Collins, I actually just thought of this. <laughs> So, Kevin Hunt, where are you, young man? I'm here. Hey. I'm going to, brilliant, I'm going to stop sharing now, and uh, I'm going to make, I'm going to highlight your, here we go, spotlight for everyone to see him. There he is, the famous gorilla. <laughs> Gorilla's uh, slightly better player than what I am, I think. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> Kevin, uh, thank you for joining us today, and um, you're a senior group leader based in Norfolk Way. Um, I want you to tell us a little bit about your story, Kevin. Firstly, how did you get involved in UW, um, your experiences in UW, and really some, some top tips and ideas, especially to the new people on this call, like Tia, who's just joined and gathered six, seven customers and a few others. So over to you. Okay, so um, what I've had planned was for me to share a little story about free UW, but you obviously don't want to hear oh, that. So go on. <laughs> Please go. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, my name's Kevin. I live in the beautiful Norfolk countryside uh, with my gorgeous partner, Nikki, and also uh, my amazing daughter, Jenna. Uh, I've been in, my background and number one passion in life, as you can see, is music. And I've been involved in this fabulous business for just over 20 years. Um, some of you may have seen the slot that I did at the Impact kickoff, uh, which is on the Partner Portal, and that was also shared um, on email at the weekend, and that is why uh, Rob has very kindly asked me to speak today, and I'm privileged that he's asked me to do that. Um, if you haven't seen that, do pop onto the portal afterwards, and then maybe it'll make a little bit of sense of, of what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, so with your permission, I'd like to share just a short piece of my story um, and the experiences in life and how that gave me the mindset to go into UW and how that dovetailed into UW. Would that be okay? Perfect. Okay, brilliant. So I want to take you back to, to junior school. Now at junior school, I was a relatively bright kid. Um, I was always in the top two in the class, but then I had a bad day and that bad day was called the 11 plus. And that one bad day shaped the next five years of my life. And I vowed there and then to never again let one bad day have such a profound effect on me. So I ended up going to a secondary modern school, which was okay, but it didn't really have the greatest sphere of influence. Now, around about this time, I was seduced by music and I was drawn towards playing the drums. And in my bedroom, I had a series of cardboard boxes and, and Tupperware containers, which I used to practice on. But I realized that to improve, I would need to get a real drum kit and this would take money and to get money I would need a job. Now to work you had to be 13 years old and I was only 11. So I called up a local restaurant, lied about my age and got a job. Washing tape, uh, clearing tables and washing up. All summer long I worked for the princely sum of around 15 pence an hour. It's, it turned out to be the only real job I ever had. But at the end of the summer I had 70 pounds and I got my first drum kit. Now there was no stopping me. Home every day, practice, practice, practice every evening, practice, practice, practice every weekend, practice, practice, practice. And after around about two years, I got into my first band and we spent three or four nights a week playing around local venues in the summertime. Now I thought I really had arrived because here I was getting paid for doing something I really loved with the added bonus of girls watching me um, and, and one or two boys, I should add. <laughs> um, but then it was time to knuckle down and study for my exams. And around about this time, the careers master came around the school and he said, what do you want to do with your life? And I said, well, sir, I would like to be the drummer in a long haired rock and roll band. And do you know what? He laughed at me. He said, don't be ridiculous. That's not for the likes of you. Why don't you become a plumber or an electrician or something? So I guess I just had my first real taste of the dream stealers. So to buy some time, I went to college to study for my A-levels. I then got a place at university and to buy some more time, I deferred for a year. And around about this time, I formed a band with, with an old school friend of mine. And we decided that we wanted to write original material in an effort to make it. And I sat these guys down and I said, we're gonna have one year of no turn back effort in an attempt to get a recording contract. There followed hours and hours on the telephone 
hours and hours making up information packs, hours and hours traveling to different events. Does this sound kind of familiar? But we started to get record company interest and one particular company said they wanted to see us play live. So we organized this showcase gig at a place called the Ruskin Arms in East London, which is where Iron Maiden had started. And the promoter of this particular gig had promised us that there would be a professional PA system and an engineer provided. But of course, when we got there, there wasn't. So we were a little stuck. But we decided to pull out our crappy little vocal rehearsal PA out at the back of the van and play anyway. It sounded dreadful. But at the end of it, the record company came up and said, not only do we like your songs, we like your attitude. And they signed us. And we recorded our debut album at a place called the Chapel Studios in Lincolnshire under the production guidance of a gentleman called Bram Tchaikovsky, who'd been the guitarist in a band called The Motors. And the album was released. And I was receiving phone calls from my friends who were at university in London saying, we've just been onto Oxford Street and bought your album. And there's a great big display of it in the window. Now, this 21-year-old was starting to feel pretty good about himself. Then we released a single, which got played on specialist rock shows. And we went out on tour with a band called Magnum. And then we had what we thought was the real ace up our sleeve in the form of a second single, which we thought was particularly commercial. And this was released. And not only did this get played on specialist rock shows, but it started to get played on daytime radio. And we were just about to go out on tour with a band called Uriah Heap when the company rang me and said, we're pulling you off the tour. We're going to make a promo video instead. And we spent the next two weeks making this promo video. And then they called and said, we've got some amazing news for you. We've secured a showing of the video on a Saturday morning TV show called Whack Tracks, which was part of the Wide Awake Club. Now, back in those days, if you got yourself onto a Saturday morning TV show, you were almost guaranteed to go into the charts the next week. Saturday came with great excitement. No video was played. And it transpired that the producer of this particular video had taken some short cuts and employed some non-union technicians in the process. So they refused to play it. So for the first time in my life, I faced sheer and utter disappointment. So do you think that now when my customer cancels, or my guest doesn't turn up at the opportunity presentation, or someone says no to me, I'm pretty hardened to it. But I refused to lay down and die. I went on to form two other bands that gained recording contracts. And as you saw earlier, I went to meet and play alongside the likes of Phil Collins, Toya Wilcox, uh, and also, believe it or not, the Supremes. Now, this one set me up beautifully for this business because it allowed me to stand next to National Network leader Clive Leach, as the only other utility warehouse distributor who's been up all night having a rocking good night with Diana Ross. That's, that's a true fact. <laughs> um, so when UW came along, I had a mighty big why. I had a personal debt of over 56,000 pounds. Now, if you've seen the story of the video, this is how that dovetails into that. So I'm not gonna go into that again now. If you haven't seen it, do pop onto the portal and have a look there. So Rob, you asked me for some, for some top tips. So I'll just give you a few bits of my sort of thinking. And then if you wanna throw something back at me, that's fine. So you'll often hear leaders and people in this business say something very boring. They talk about consistency and consistency and you hear that all the time. And the reason you hear that is because it works and because it's true. The other thing I think you need to be for a top tip, especially in this day and age is to be adaptable. Because in nature, when the environment changes, you can either move, you can adapt, or you can die. So we have to adapt in our business. Now, I've got people in my business who, when they stop using the paper application form several years back, their business ground to a halt because they refuse to adapt and continue. And we're seeing the same thing now uh, with the current COVID environment and the remote system. I don't think it's the fact that people can't adapt, it's the fact that they, they refuse to. Another top tip for me is to mind your own business. Do not compare yourself to other people. Um, this is very difficult. I've done this, everybody does this. You know what it's like, I'll, I'll tell you a true story. Um, I went out one day, I had six appointments in the diary. The first five all said no. Appointment number six said no to the business, but they signed up as a Daffy Gold customer. Woohoo, let's go home and celebrate. I've got something from the day. 
But then I made the almighty mistake of going on to the Utility Warehouse Facebook forum. And I saw that someone had been out and signed up five Dappy Girls, three business partners, and got 489 referrals before lunchtime. And this is just how it is, isn't it? So do not compare yourselves to other people. Run your own race. It, it's your business. But the biggest tip I can give anybody is to be passionate. Be passionate about what you have your hands on. Because this is the best business opportunity available in the UK, bar none. And you will never, ever see an opportunity of this magnitude come around again in your lifetimes. People who've heard me speak, I'll always say, you know, go out there with some fire in your belly, some belief in your heart and some passion in your soul. And this will give you anything that you truly desire. Wow, wow, wow. Kevin, that is absolutely awesome. I never, I never knew that about you. I never knew, you know, I, I love the story. You're on 15 pence an hour. It seems like, um, I think that was my residual check for the first few months in UW, you know, yeah. um, the time and effort I put into it. And you had this dream, this dream of a band, your own band, doing your own material. And, you know, having this promo video done, you must have been so excited about this Saturday morning. And then when it didn't happen, you must have been asking so many questions, you know. And then, you know, as you said, because they didn't use any union guys, suddenly it wasn't going ahead. And that one decision by someone else changed your destiny, really, I suppose, your whole life. You could have been, you could have been the new... What I am made and what? Who's your, sorry, who is your best best band you always look up to? Uh, my, my my hero in music is a guy called David Coverdale, who's the lead singer in White Snake. Uh, it's a bit strange for a drummer to uh, worship a singer, but I've always been into singers, and I just I just love White Snake. I'm actually growing my hair so I can audition when things start uh, <laughs> start getting back to normal. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose you don't, you, you know, this lockdown is a good excuse to you, for you to grow your hair, isn't it? So, yeah. Well, you, ca you can't go to the barbers, can you? And yeah. uh, um, my daughter says I've got to keep it longer. I'm not allowed to cut it now. So, um. <laughs> and, and I, I loved your perseverance because how many people would have thrown their toys out of the pram and said, oh, you know, um, life's horrible and rubbish and all this. And you, obviously you kept going with your band, but there's, there must have been a point where, you had that reality check and go, I'm not going to make it big, but I'm happy just playing in local gigs and doing something I enjoy. And if I make a little bit of money out of it, great. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we, we pursued the, the fame and fortune thing for several years, really, the original material thing. Um, when I got involved in UW, we didn't actually play for 10 years because uh, my partner's a singer. And it wasn't the fact that we didn't want to, but we had a little one come along and you know how that changes your life. And, and we were building this business. And then I got real itchy feet. Um, so we started to sort of form a little covers band, which we still got to this day, which is a lot of fun. But, you know, the, the, the disappointment side is much the same in this business, isn't it? I mean, how many people have you had come into your business who are going to be the next big thing? Um, they're going to be your next SGL. They're going to make you loads of money. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a pound for every time that's happened, or, or a penny even. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we'd both be very rich then, wouldn't we? Yeah. Uh, what, what's, your, what's your greatest moment in prior to UW? What is that one moment you look back on and go, wow, that was was it meeting Phil Collins? Was it with the Supremes? What was your biggest moment? Well, I'd have to say the birth of my daughter. Yay! <laughs> Yay. Obviously meeting your wife, obviously. You know. Well, well, we're not we're not married yet. It's a bit of a moot point. <laughs> 20 years in the making. <laughs> okay. Living in sin, rock and roll style. That's what I like. <laughs> okay. And now you're in UW. What's been your greatest moment in UW? Oh, um, several, really. I mean, um, you can see lots of, um, I can see a few friendly faces on here so from, from Norfolk and that. It's probably the people that you meet, um, people that you meet that become friends, people that you would um, never have met if you weren't involved in this business. But I think changing lives is the best thing. Um, I mean, this business changes lives, uh, not just your life, but I think the most satisfying thing is the, the people that you can help change lives. I mean, if you pop on, have a look at the video that I did, you'll know that I sort of helped one person change their life. 
uh, from living out the back of a van homeless to living the life of his dreams. And that makes me feel really good. Um, I am forever grateful to a guy called Stephen Longworth for getting me involved in this business and, and for giving us the hope that we pray for and, and for believing in us. I mean, I shudder to think in this current environment, where would we be today without this, uh, without that residual income? And, and, you know, there are obviously lots of people in the music world that are struggling. You know, there, there are no live bands going on. You know, I, 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 I run a club in town, you know, and we book music. And we've had so many bands contacting us going, when you're open, we do it for half the normal price. We just want to get up and running again you know um so there must be obviously you must be sat there thinking i must go through my old contacts and speak to these guys and and maybe we can use your story kevin to say look we we know this guy he was in a band he nearly made it and now he's made it in uw receiving this royalty income that's the power of uw isn't it yeah well residual income i heard a great phrase i think it was claire hingott said that um have you heard of residual income? Well, it's it's reserved for um, songwriters, um, authors, and utility warehouse partners. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. But I never knew you had a club, Rob. What's that all about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll invite you down. We'll invite you down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, get, get, going back to what you were saying about, um, yeah, I mean, people like us who do it for fun, we miss it. But the people out there, the sound engineers, the lighting technicians, the people that rely on it for a living and we know several of them but you'll be amazed how many people have still got their heads stuck firmly in the sand i mean we've got something to offer people uh there's never been so many people in need of our help so much but the people that still have their heads stuck in the sands but that will change i don't think we've seen the half of it yet it's when we start to come out of this thing that, that we're going to really really see where people start to struggle because it's all right for people sitting at home at the moment on, on furlough, because that's sort of residual income, isn't it, <laughs> for doing nothing? But that ain't going to last forever. No, there are some scary times ahead. But I do believe, Kevin, we can't convert everyone. I think, you know, uh, as I say, you know, there's an opportunity to join, you know, the armed forces or the police. And for some of us, it'll just be, there is no way I'm joining the armed forces or the police. It's too scary. And starting a business for some people seems very, very scary. And we obviously have to kind of hold their hands and go, look, just try it. You know, I've got many new partners joined recently and it was literally like, just try it. Let's see how we go for the first few weeks. And like Tia and a few other guys and girls on this call that have joined, it's like, wow, with the help and support from the sponsors, we can get them up and running, earning some, some money. Um, the hard, the tricky pick is keeping that focus going, isn't it? it it's, it's like going to the gym. You can go for a few weeks and, oh, yes, this is fun. It's new. It's different. And after a while, it becomes a bit monotonous. Is that a good word to use? Maybe I don't know. A bit of, you know, it's like it is like a job in some respects that you've got to pick up the phone, make some phone calls and get stuck in, haven't you? Absolutely. I mean, uh, it amazes me the amount of people that join and think that they don't have to do anything. <laughs> no matter how much you guide them and plug them into the system. Um, key thing, isn't it? Plug, plug them people into the system. We know it's successful. We know it'll work if, if they do that. And we have, um, I mean, my upline, they coined a phrase that when people join, we give them a flu jab um, and we set them up. We inoculate them for the dream stealers and the nose that they're going to get um, to manage their expectations. So it's not about just getting people in and getting them started. It's about keeping them going, isn't it? I mean, you must, you must, you know, you know, back in the day when, um, what was it? Five pound customer gathering bonus. We had uh, one service that probably didn't, didn't work very well. And we could have said, all right, that's it. Let's throw the towel in. Um, we're going to wait till broadband comes. Or we're going to wait till energy comes. But us and a few other people on this call, we had the vision to stay in there because because we knew what was coming. Because it's, it's it's all about belief, isn't it? It's about mindset. Kevin, this is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to open up to the guys and girls on the call if they would like to ask you any questions. You can unmute yourselves if you would like, guys, and ask the the drummer who knows <laughs> Phil Collins in the Supremes. The rock and roll rock star, Kevin okay. Hunt. Any questions if you want to unmute yourselves? They're all very quiet now, which is great. Um, so top tip going forward then, 
Kevin, um, inoculate yourself against those those dream stealers, I suppose. And also, like in any band, you've got to keep bashing out the material. In, in, in other words, you've got to keep phoning people and offer them the opportunity to become a customer or a partner. Yeah, I mean, I that's... Just, oh, I sorry. Ask, Kevin, oh, can I yeah. ask you, for all the, the new people here, looking back, we know it was different in the early days, the way we had to work the business. And as you said, rightly, we have to evolve. What would be your number one thing for them, that the number one top tip that's going to help them with that resilience? Oh, oh so Lisa, I did, couldn't see you for a minute. I, I thought I recognised your voice. That, that, that's a difficult one, isn't it? Um, I, plug into the system. Plug into the system. Um, beware the dream stealers, because there's a lot of them out there. Um, you know, I always say that, you know, if, if you want legal advice, would you not talk to a lawyer or your, or your mate down the pub? Um, so when it comes to things like utilities or business opportunities, do you want to talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about or you make down the pub? People don't listen, but it's the way it is. Thanks. Great answer. Great answer. Yeah, it's um, some of the dream stealers, um, you know, are our good friends or family, aren't they? I always remember my mum saying to me, you know, you, why don't you get a proper job? You know, this commission only thing is a bit scary. Um, and even in lockdown, she, she was a bit concerned going, you're going to be OK in this, this lockdown. You're going to get furlough money or something. I'm like, mum, I'm self-employed, you know, <laughs> and uh, thankfully self-employed people can, you know, you can claim loss of earnings or whatever. I don't know what you can claim, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure you can claim the stuff, but. And that's if you've been trading for more than a year. If you haven't been trading for more than a year, then that is scary. It's really scary out there. Yeah. Um, but do you think we could be doing more, Kevin, in this climate? Do you think, and I'm speaking for myself, I sometimes look at me, myself and my business going, maybe I could do a lot more. Maybe I'm just a bit kind of easy going with this. Maybe I should get more red and drive it harder and recruit more and phone more. And what's your thoughts? Yeah, we can, we can always do more, can't we? Um, but, you know, just looking at your stats that you put up, pretty impressive, like some of the senior group leaders banging, banging the customers and the partners in, so, so leading by example. Um, I've always been a great believer of lead by example, not go into management mode. Um, having said that, you've got to balance it with the fact that, you know, I joined this business for the royalty income. I didn't join for the quit, which wasn't there. I didn't join for, I joined it for the walk away income and I understood that straight away. So what I love about this is, you know, if I decide to do nothing, I'll still get paid. Tomorrow's payday, by the way. <laughs> um, you know, it's not that I don't do anything, but yeah, I mean, some of us, maybe we, we have to up our game. We have to up our do game. You, do you get any royalties from any records you've ever made in the past, Kevin? I think I got around about eleven pound sixty seven this year from the from the PRS, which was from um, it, it, from some music we we done on a program called Bergerac a few years back. I think I think it still gets shown in Albania or somewhere. So, uh, isn't, isn't that great though? Isn't that you know it's like UW. I always say I, I you know I've been with the company twenty three years, and tomorrow we'll get that the commission statement come out last night. You see, you go. You know, I still, I, I don't have to work and this money keeps coming in. It is, I, I can't sing. Um, I tried to, but I can't. I can't, I'm not good as a writer. Even my spell check gets it wrong, you know. But I, I can share an opportunity with people, how to make money or save money. And I think that's fantastic because we can help so many people. And we can live like rock stars, can't we, Kevin? You like the long hair sort of stuff. And I, I like it a bit shorter. Or, or, I, think it's, I think it's just one of those things. I'm going to go bold at some point, I think. So. Well, well, I mean, you're into cars, aren't you? You're, 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 like a, you're like a petrol head. I mean, cars mean nothing to me. They get me from A to B. I mean, I've got a very nice car, the, the company Mercedes, but it doesn't particularly turn me on, but it's, it's horses for courses, isn't it? Um, and, and I think one key thing to this business is that what you're looking for is people that are better than you. Um, wasn't too difficult for me that side of it but <laughs> you know you, you find five or six people that are better than you then happy days um what is it you looking for a few generals that want to be lieutenants or is it the other way around i don't know anything about, yeah. <laughs> about army ranks but yeah. 
I think I think nothing. I'm not taking anything away from you, Kevin. Uh, but my success has always been about the people in the team. It's not me. It's, it's the Elisa's, the Susie's, the Stuart Edmonstons, my leadership that, you know, it's great to see these guys running their own team meetings, doing their own trainings. And, and you know, that's when you know, wow, I've got a great team and guys. And, and I always say to the guys and girls, please recruit happy, smiley people. You know, we don't want the miserable ones. We put them in Norfolk area, let Kevin Hunt train them. You know. Uh, well, you know, you know, 10 years as a company trainer. <laughs> you, you, you've been there, you've done it. <laughs> yeah. but Kevin, can I also say, when I ever used to come up to Norfolk, you were a great ambassador for the company. You're one of those guys that, you know, they didn't have to be in your team. You would look after everyone up there and guide them, support them, mentor them. Um, and I do have quite a big team up in Norfolk, as you know, and they all speak very highly of you, Kevin. I like to say a big thank you today. You, you, you know, we don't have many rock stars on our team meetings, so it's been absolutely fantastic. I think everyone will agree on that. Um, and we sincerely wish you a great year, Kevin. Um, we'll have to get you down in my club when um, we're out of lockdown and, and have a live gig from, uh, well, send me a demo tape for us. <laughs> uh, you, you go, on, go on Facebook or YouTube. It's All right. on. <laughs> we'll find you on there. You're not really the gorilla, but we'll find you on there. Uh, Kevin, thank you for all your great top tips. Um, you've, you've given us a great start to the day. Have a great week. Thank you very much. And I'll unmute everyone if you want to say goodbye to Kevin. And um, yeah, fantastic. Have a good day, mate. You take care. Thank you.